Greetings everyone and welcome back to Catech Reviews. Now, usually these Catech Reviews of movies and such aren't spoiler heavy. But this is an exception. To properly review this movie, you almost have to spoil this movie. So if you don't want spoilers, this is your ejection seat. Right here, right now. If you don't care much about it, then good. Back in 1995, at the peak of its power, 20th Century Fox decided to give Power Rangers its first movie adaptation. I've done a review on it. Go back into the Kedek Reviews playlist to see it. It was a straight one-to-one -one adaptation of the TV series that was a massive hit. And it did moderately well at the box office and excited fans about what was to come in the TV show. Its follow-up, however, Turbo at Power Rangers movie was less received. Largely hated by most of the hardcore Power Ranger fandom. On a side note, I've also done a review of that movie in the same Kydek Reviews playlist. But since that movie in, in late 1996, the Power Rangers have been away from the big screen proper. As their TV series begins to flourish in what happens to be its 25th active year next year through the series of Super Ninja Steel and its follow-up. But earlier this year, it was given the opportunity to once again return to the big screen thanks to Lionsgate alongside its owners Saban Brands Entertainment to once again give Power Rangers its big screen lift. Only this time it would not only, it would not be a one-to-one -one adaptation instead it would be its own unique monster. Thus we get to Saban's Power Rangers and yes the Saban's is needed here. It's a bit of egotism and narcissism but hey we'll let it pass. But as Lionsgate made a good Power Rangers movie. Well, after viewing it just earlier this afternoon for the first time, the answer has me divided in three. You see, this movie is more or less three things. One, it's trying to be a big budget action movie in the first part of the year. It's also trying to be a Power Rangers movie to satisfy the fans, especially of the Mighty Morphin canon, canon and pay its respects to the long-running series. But also, due to its many, many different cast changes, changes and rewrites of the popular original five, this movie, however, is trying to be a third thing. It's trying to be social commentary. And when things, especially established brands, try to be social commentary, it can be a stretch. A real stretch. Now, Unlike the original cast, the casting is not as straightforward as the original. So you're not going to get the stereotype Black Ranger as the black guy, guy 
Pink Ranger is the girly girl, Yellow Ranger is the Asian, and such. See, they've done the smart thing of casting the colors differently. The black guy is blue. The Asian just so happens to be black. Although the pink and reds are casted casted pretty much normally. It's more or less the Yellow Ranger that has the most controversy or hearsay. You see, in this movie, spoilers, and there are many to come here, the Yellow Ranger Trini is casted and written as a lesbian. The movie takes several attempts at making this known by having Trini's character stare at Kimberly repeatedly, have a fight scene over some lunch food, and ultimately, when the in reveal is adhered to at the campfire scene in the movie, it's strongly implied. Sadly, however, this implement is played for one of the worst jokes in the movie. Credit Bill Hader's Alpha 5 for that bad joke early in the movie when he says she's staring at him. Is that what all humans do? Unquote. It's very off-putting, weird, and just doesn't help the movie. It makes the social commentary seem forced at this ledger. Not to mention a big pseudo sequence with Rita Repulsa's Elizabeth Banks being the actor, which by the way, Elizabeth Banks, well done on your Rita Repulsa. This darker, more aggressive, more, more subdued, shadowy Rita Repulsa is a far cry from the original Rita Repulsa in the Mighty Morphin and Zeo eras. Gone are the cackly, cackly laughs and misguided headaches. And herein is a character that is dark focused, mysterious, and downright scary at times. Her interaction with Trini's character is one of the scarier notions of the movie. Plus, her connection to Zordon, played by Brian Craxton, gives this movie a different mythos. Zordon and Rita used to be Power Rangers together until Rita betrayed the team almost Star Fox style. See, she's out to get the Zeo Crystal. Yes, it's a reference to that Zeo Crystal, but in this movie, every planet living has a piece of a Zeo Crystal in it. And Rita's after Earths, naturally, so that she can gain ultimate power and control the universe like all evil villains. Zordon, saving the power coins in his last battle as a ranger, is trapped within his own alien spaceship, trying to find the next group of power rangers, our lovely little group. But unlike the Power Rangers of the Mighty Morphin era, who were more idealistic, crystal clear morality, and all in all standout people, these Power Rangers however are not. These are what I like to call the Twilight Generation Power Rangers. They all have their own social anxieties, they all have their own problems, and they're all little winks and nods to different social problems in the world today. 
Billy is socially awkward, OCD, disabled in some aspects. So, so because of that, he gets bullied. Trini, of course, being the lesbian, is the misunderstood one of the family. Kimberly is the former cheerleader who's trying to rediscover herself after being thrown thrown out of the collective clique. Zack is the lone wolf, more brooding, emotional, and wants to keep to himself. Jason, the leader, is the former star of the football team that that the parents don't understand that has the rebellious side and doesn't really want to follow the path predestined. All of this is naturally cliche as hell, but the interpretations are, I wouldn't say could, I would more or less say the word interesting especially on the aspect of Billy's character. Billy, the character that used to be the antisocial nerd and tech geek, which this Billy kind of still is, is more or less the emotional heart of the film. He's the one that likes the idea of being a Power Ranger, wants to be more, more involved, is the one trying to figure out the majority of the plot and the one that has general interest in being part of the team. And it's due to his sacrifice, yes, he quote unquote dies in this movie, that finally forces the other four rangers to actually act like teammates. You see, this is also a big problem with Power Rangers. The Power Rangers don't get along in this movie. In fact, they don't get along for a good 85 to 90 percent of the movie's runtime. They are constantly at each other's throats, indecisive, and oh no, disconnected. It's only after the Rita Trini sequence and the campfire scene, plus the combination of Billy's death, that finally brings the team together as friends to get the job done. Which doesn't feel earned. It feels forced because of course the five rangers have to come together. This also isn't helped by Brian Cranston Zordon or Bill Hader's Alpha 5. Brian Cranston Zordon is far different than, than that of David Fleming's original character in the original series. In the original series, Zordon is the one with sagic vice not necessarily trying to turn our rangers into anything, but more or less guide them to the victories that they need and a sense of self-discovery. Brian Cranston Zordon, however, is more or less a drill sergeant. Hurt and pained by the loss of his own ranger team, he wants this ranger team to be to be good so much so that he can get over his own problems and his own grief and anxiety over the loss of his own team. And even openly says that the only reason he wants the rangers together is so that he can escape the time warp he's in so that he can lead the Rangers, a rather selfish Zordon indeed. Plus, practically, he gives up on them near the end of the second act of the film. Now, granted, the kids have given him no reason to hope, seeing that 
they still haven't figured out how the morphing works or can even fight decently. But, this also makes Zordon and Alpha 5 usually the more supportive uplifting characters, even in Alpha 5's case, seem like an absolute jerk and unlikable. It's hard to believe that these kids would even attach to Zordon in the third act, but for some odd reason, it's written as if they do, which is bad phonetically and doesn't really save Zordon from the crapper here. But that's not to say that Mr. Clemson didn't give Zordon his best effort. He most certainly did. Did with kind words, rapalm, and even using a little bit of a alien language, which is rather unique. Calling the English language that we're used to primitive. Now, if you're wondering where the action's at, that's the biggest problem with this movie. Only the final 30 minutes of it contain the action that you would expect from Power Rangers. It's not to say that the visual effects that you get throughout and the stunt work isn't incredibly done and there are some very well done camera shots but the lighting is so up and down in this movie especially in the darker scenes at play. Music is filled with different sorts of pop hits to make up, make up the soundtrack. Plus, it's kind of a dark techno feel. Otherwise, doesn't fit the majesty of what a Power Rangers film feels like. Plus, the snippet they use from Go Go Power Rangers isn't even something brand new. It's a snippet directly from the 1995 version of the Power Rangers movie when the Zords are finally on the move. When the Rangers get in the suits, however, finally the movie acts less like Breakfast Club with superpowers and more like a Power Rangers movie. The martial arts are good to look at. The putties have an extendric design. The rangers look genuinely kick-ass. And the zords, although they look like budget transformers, get the job done. Looking big, brooding, and massive. Even the formation of the megazord and the way it's used is more akin to Voltron rather than your standard Megazord, seeing that it takes the collective mind and unification of all the members to make the Megazord move, as well as activate the powers, which makes the whole thing of working together as a team as one feel more together phonetically. If the story would have helped it out, however, to be more clear that that was the true solution, it would have helped. But this movie is mired way too much in its teenage angst. Although it builds characters that are relatable, they're relatable far too late and they only earn your enduring matter when the final battle is won. Turning Zordon into a replacement father figure, especially for the Jason character, is trying too hard phonetically to drive home Jason's key problem, but also drive him forward to be a leader. It almost breaks the illusion of what the Zordon character should be. And although 
Jason does turn out to do well. Well, and all the actors give their final efforts. And this mess script, plus some bad plot decisions and not enough Ranger action, will satisfy the Ranger fan. Plus the misuse of the Zeo Crystal and the open marketing that the Zeo Crystal of the Earth was locked in a Krispy Kreme. No, I'm not making this up. The lack of Power Rangers action, only in the first and the last third, is what really hurts this movie. Sure, the character building and theming, theming is done okay, but not enough to make the characters relatable. Good visual effects are ruined by the constant over-talking, talking and almost bearing, very preaching nature of the subject matter. In other words, the movie is hurt by its own themes of friendship, acceptance, and getting together because it focuses too much on that and that alone and not letting the action drive the message. There's a lot of good in Power Rangers. It's just too bad that it's bogged down by trying to tell a message that the TV show has for over 25 years, even though it's squeaky clean, has told clearly and without reproach. This movie is more or less not a Power Rangers movie for the fans, it's a Power Rangers movie for the 21st century. And in that aspect, it wins a lot. But maybe next time, the movie shouldn't try nearly as hard to drive home its social messages, no matter how good, and trust me, their good can be. Even those with good intentions can even sometimes fail. And sadly, this movie does. That's why, sadly, I have to give Saban's Power Rangers only a 4 out of 10. As an action flick, there isn't enough action to keep you invested. Character development. Character development is done well, and the themings are in good heart to the Power Ranger tradition. But more morphin, more morphin, less emotion might be might be needed for a follow-up. And some of the character choices seem in the right place heart-wise, but sadly mis-executed due to a way too preachy script. So what are your feelings on Saban's Power Rangers as it comes out on DVD and Blu-ray officially today? If there was a sequel, what would you require for the next Ranger movie adventure to be better? And, also on an off note, how, how did you feel about social commentary in your branded movies? Tell me in the comment section below how you feel about all of these things and make sure to Follow the annotation boxes in the end card to subscribe by clicking on our logo and by following the two video adaptations for more video content. One, 
being the review of Power Rangers Mega Battle, a video game release based loosely on both the TV show and movie, and also a link to our Kinetic Reviews playlist in which you can find the other two Power Ranger movie reviews present for both Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie and Turbo a Power Rangers movie if you're interested in my feelings on those. Until next time, find peace in your own Nirvana and thanks for thanks for watching. And stay tuned for more.